Welcome to the Stop Over Drinking and Start Living podcast, where high achieving, goal oriented rebel women come to learn how to live a vibrant and fulfilling life without requiring alcohol to get through it. No labels, no judgments, no saying you'll never drink again, just real proven methods to help you stop rebelling against yourself with alcohol so you can drink less and do more. I'm your host, Angela Masenik. Let's dig in. I want a sugar. I know you like- Welcome to episode 254, a holiday rewind special called You Get to Say No, Not Just to Alcohol. Well, hello, hello, hello. How are you all? I'm in Ireland (laughs) and having a fantastic time. That's going to be a whole nother episode, hopefully coming soon. But for now, I wanted to give you a chance to listen to an episode I did last year at the holiday time that was very popular. And I think that everybody could use a re-listen to this as we are now officially in the holiday season. It's called, You Get to Say No, Not Just to Alcohol. And there are some exercises in there that I actually want you to do. So you're going to want to have a piece of paper or a journal or a notebook and pen and, you know, be sitting down and do this like a little class and take notes and actually do the exercise that I'm asking you to do and approach this holiday season like you never have before, because you don't have to do it all, my friends. You don't. Just like you don't have to drink all the drinks and eat all the food, you don't have to do all of the things that you think are required for the holidays. So make sure that you take care of yourselves and put yourselves as a number one priority on top of that list so that you don't drink so much and you don't feel resentful and exhausted and you actually can have some downtime this holiday season. It is possible, I promise. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed the episode. So happy to be here with you today. We are inching our way towards Christmas and, you know, things can get busy. (laughs) And I just wanted to pop in and record a podcast about the holidays. Again, I know we talked about it last week and you listened to the class um, that I recorded. And I hope that that helped you, like really thinking about the experience that you wanted to have during the holidays. But I wanted to dive a little bit deeper on saying no and giving your yourself permission to say no. And this has come up a lot with people inside the coaching program. A lot of people have been coming in and like talking about family relationships or events that they're going to where there's this one person that, you know, really grinds on their nerves and they're worried about it because that's usually when they overdrink and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So maybe you think about, you know, something that you have coming up that, you know, you, there's going to be a person or several there that, you know, kind of trigger you to want to numb out. <laughs> I know that was me for a lot of it, right? A lot of the holiday situations, um, I would be around specific people that really I didn't enjoy being around and I didn't know what I know now about feelings and our thoughts and all of that. And I would just get into my automatic process of drinking a lot and sometimes even hiding drinks. Like, you know, putting drinks in a coffee cup or something like that. Like, and I would drink, you know, while I was cooking or pre-partying and, you know, just to be able to deal with all of it. And so I want to offer some advice for you is to just look at the things that you have going on, the things that you have coming up. What do you think about attending that family event? What do you think about going to that work party? What do you think about, you know, doing the big song and dance on Christmas morning or whatever that you have going on? And if you're having thoughts like, this is just what I do because it's family and you just deal with it because it's your family and you only have one family and, you know, you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. I just want you to pause there and just notice if you're thinking some of those thoughts. Okay. And I want to invite you that you can say no to stuff. We are all adults and you don't have to go do things that you don't want to do. Okay, so if there's things that you have on the calendar or things that you've committed to, I'm not saying that you need to cancel them or anything, but it doesn't have to be so black and white. Okay, but maybe you could look at how you're thinking about that. And I just want to challenge you that just because they're your family or just because you're your coworkers or whatever it is, doesn't mean you have to do anything. 
Like nobody is forcing you to go do this stuff. Our society likes to program us to believe that we need to put up with shit because they're family, because they're coworkers, because of blah, 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 right? And I just want you to recognize that that's what we've been told that we should do. But now you are an adult and you get to decide with your own free will the things that you do or do not do. And I really want you to feel into that because you guys do have that decision-making capabilities, okay? You don't have to do any of it, right? And the reason why we believe that we have to do some of this is really just some programming, like I mentioned, because we don't want people to be mad at us. We don't want people to talk smack about us, right? We don't want to upset people. And so we continue upsetting ourselves at the cost, right, of preserving somebody else's feelings. And the truth is we can't control how other people think and feel. They're thinking and feeling their things based on how they think about things. And really it has not a lot to do with us. Yes, they will have some thoughts if you all of a sudden don't come to the event, right? Or say I'm not hosting it or take a departure from the script of what you've been doing for years and years and years, of course, people are going to say that they, people don't like change. Like we don't like change. Right. And so when there could be a change happening or a small shift, you know, people might have some opinions about that and that's okay. Right. Like, of course they want to be upset about it and that's fine. Like they are allowed to have their thoughts and feelings about that, but I don't want that to stop you from doing what's right for you. And I know I've shared this with you in the past, maybe several times on this podcast, but I've used this filter this whole year, this whole year of 2022 that I came up with at the beginning of the year. And it it really helps me sort of make these decisions on whether I go or what I don't do, okay? Or things that I do, maybe habits that I have or people I want to be around or food that I eat or exercise, whatever. It's this, okay? I support and do things that feel loving and supportive to me. And I spend less time doing things that don't feel loving and supportive of me. Okay. So whenever I'm coming up with a, against a decision, it's like, yeah, is this, does this thing love and support me? Or does this thing, event, person, food, whatever it is, not really feel loving and supportive. And if it's the latter, then I try to just kind of like not do as much of that thing that I'm considering doing or not, right? So it helps me kind of decide what's good for me or not. Sometimes going to a family event isn't actually good for you because it triggers you so much and you feel so terrible, then you have to go drink to deal with it. That's not a good thing for you to be in, okay? And I just want you to recognize that. A lot of people don't talk about this stuff. And I want you to know that you get to decide what that looks like and other people get to have their own thoughts and feelings about it. And you can do this in a very loving way. It doesn't have to be like a, you know, hey, I'm just, you know, making myself happy here and you can all just F off, right? (laughs) It doesn't have to be like that. It can be very loving. Like, hey, I, you know, I'm just going to be taking some time for my, for myself this holiday season. I've realized that I've completely overdone it and I really just need to relax. This is about me and what I'm needing right now. And so that's what I'm going to do, right? Don't make it about them. Don't call them toxic. Don't like start saying it's because of how you guys behave. And that's the reason why I'm doing this thing. Like that's not super loving, although there's no reason why you can't do it. But I would expect more people to have something to say about it if that's the approach. Right. But it can be about you and what's good for you or not. Right. And I think you guys can recognize situations and events and people that are good for you and some people in situation and events or things like alcohol that's not so good for you, right? So how can you all give yourself permission to say no to some of the things that don't support you and how you feel and who you are and how you show up and the things that you do? Because this is the thing, if you go to a party or an event or host something, And you have these thoughts like, I have to do this. It's just one day out of the year. It's just what you do for family. And I can't cancel it now, right? How do you think you're going to feel in that event? You're probably going to feel resentful and angry. And you're probably going to need to pre-drink 
to manage those types of feelings, right? And you'll probably end up drinking more than you want to or eating more than you want to at that event. And then, you know, you create a result for yourself that isn't great, right? And like waking up tired and not super present and maybe saying things that you don't really want to say, right? It's just not a good time for you. If you decide to still do the things and not change anything, I want you to consider thinking, I'm choosing to do this. This is a choice that I get to make. And I'm choosing right now that this is actually what I want to do, even though it feels uncomfortable, right? Instead of thinking, I have to do this. You don't because it's not true. You can say no, you can, you have that sort of autonomy and free will to not do that stuff but it's more empowering and it feels better for you to own that decision for yourself and not like you're being forced to do it because the family expects it or your coworkers expect it or your boss expects it. Does that make sense? So try to reframe how you think about it. It's like, I'm choosing to be here and I don't really like it and that's okay. All right. And then maybe you put a limit on how long you go, right? Definitely have your drink plan uh, ahead of time. If you're drinking, like decide ahead of time before you get into that situation, how many drinks you're going to have. If you're not drinking, really visualize and secure that commitment and maybe bring your own nice mocktail or something like that. Like how can you support yourself and your goals going into an event that, you know, you're not super excited about, but you're choosing to go anyway, right? And don't sort of like stonewall yourself and say that, you know, you're just going to try to make the most of it or you should be having fun or any of that. Just accept the way you feel about it and then have your own back on it, right? And take your tools with you. Take your drink plan, you know, take a picture of it on your phone. If you're not drinking, take a picture of your zero drink plan on your phone, write it down somewhere, try to engage with it, visualize yourself being successful in that event and having an end game or an end time when you want to leave. So I would be like, okay, I'm going to go to this thing from six to eight and then I'm leaving, right? Like just have it all played out in your mind, like the actual plan, the time, your drinks, and have your right mindset before you go into the event. And you will have a much better time. (laughs) You will have honored yourself first and foremost, and you won't have regrets and resentment about it that will lead you to drinking more than you want to or feeling really bad the next day if you overdrink. Okay. But I really just want you to know that some people don't do things with their family. Like I'm a perfect example of that. We are not seeing our families for the holidays and it's okay. It's our choice to do that. And we like that choice. And other people get to have their thoughts and opinions about it. But this is not a big departure for us because you know, I haven't lived by my family in many, many years, and it's, you know, quite a haul to see them over the holidays. So we just don't do that. Um, we don't invite them here either. <laughs> and, you know, his parents, my husband's parents live a couple hours away, and they have their own stuff going on. And we didn't make it an effort or an attempt to invite them here. And we, you know, it just is what it is. But that's also sort of built into like how we operate as a family around the holidays. We always, my husband and I have always decided what we want to do is our own nuclear family first. And if the other families fit into that, that's awesome. If they don't, that's awesome. So we've never like bought into this idea that you have to do things for your family. And I'm really glad that we're sort of painting that picture for our kids because I don't want to force my kids to come home or do things that they don't want to do. You know, like I want them to want to come, but if they don't want to come, that's okay. And, you know, it just, it it can ebb and flow. It can change year to year. Nothing has to stay permanent. Nothing has to be black and white. You can decide to pull back this year and then feel more ready to do something a little bit more next year. Remember, nothing has to be permanent, okay? And you can experiment with maybe just going to one party and staying home for, you know, the rest of it or whatever. Like think about designing the season exactly the way you want it to look. And even if it's, we're coming up on the last minute and you feel like, oh, I never even thought that I could not do something or gosh, I really wish I would have, you know, listened to this podcast earlier or really considered that I have other options before, you know, it's right upon me. You still have options and how long you're going, right? Um, You still can cancel at the last minute if you want. There's still so many different ways you can approach this holiday season that feels right for you. And I just want you to know when you do make small shifts and departures from the norm, it's going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. When you first say, hey, 
I'm not feeling it. I'm going to say no this time. It's going to be, it's going to feel a little awkward and your brain is probably going to be triggered to think all the thoughts and worry about what they're going to be thinking about what you're doing or not doing. All of that is normal. Nothing has gone wrong for that. It takes practice to, to start living a life that feels more in alignment with what you want to do and saying yes to your needs first instead of saying yes to everybody else's needs and then you are like you get the sloppy leftovers right and so that is a process and it takes just little shifts and saying you know yes to yourself more understanding what it is you actually want to be doing and then getting used to you know maybe disappointing people or you know managing your mind around what other people might be thinking and worrying about that and letting that go so it is a process I'm not I hope I don't paint a picture to you that, oh, you just say, oh, I'm not coming. And then that's it. And everything is, you know, (laughs) daisies and rainbows. It's definitely not that. Like it will feel uncomfortable at first, but then you start to notice how you feel about doing more of the things that are good for you. And you will feel more in alignment with your life. And then it, you won't be triggered so much to worry about it so much. And it'll just feel more natural. Like it does for me. Like we just do what we want with our family and everybody else gets to do what they want too. We're not putting pressure on anybody else. Nobody's putting pressure on us. And that's just the way it is now. But for sure, like I'm, I don't remember, but at the beginning when we started saying no to things, or probably when we started having kids and they were little, like we just started saying no, there was probably, you know, some thoughts that were, were had about that. And I probably felt uncomfortable. Um, when I have my friend group and I get invited to a lot of things and I say no, to a lot of stuff. At first that felt very uncomfortable for me. And I got coaching on that and I had to work through that because I was so worried about hurting their feelings. And so I want you to know that that's normal. And I still have that sometimes, like if it's a big decision and I say no to somebody, then my brain still goes there too. But I just know that that's just normal, right? And I let myself process that and be okay with those thoughts and I don't make it mean anything. So I want you to just be aware that that's, um, that can happen when you're just starting this stuff, right? So it's okay for you to say no, and you can use the same advice on saying no to that extra drink, to saying no to having a drink at all. You know, just I'm good for now or no for now is amazing t- thing to say. Um, but I think it's really like take it to the next level and not just say no to the extra drink or to having a drink in the first place. But let's look at other ways that you can say no to things that don't feel good for you and that that don't really support you and that aren't maybe healthy for you, right? So I'm sure you probably have a list or have been triggered to think about some of these things by listening to this podcast, but what are some little ways you can start to honor yourself here around the holidays where you get to say yes to yourself more and more and do more of the things for you? Maybe that's just leaving an hour earlier. Maybe that's only showing up, you know, mid-party or maybe you don't host something or you don't cook all of the different um, dishes for the holiday party. Maybe you ask for help, right? There's so many different ways that you can approach these things. Um, Try to remember there's not a, a black or white way to do it and that everything is sort of flexible and fluid and you can figure out what's best for you in the way that's best for you. All right, my friends, and if you want support in this, this is exactly what I support my clients on. You know, a lot of the times people, women especially come in, they don't know how to do this. They don't know how to say no. They just say yes to all the things and they get very resentful for it. And that's why we drink at the end of the day. And so I help them take baby steps and to learn how to do that for themselves and to find themselves more and to figure out what is good for them and what is not good for them so they can live more in alignment with themselves and feel good about their lives and not need to go drink in every single type of situation. All right, my friends, I hope you have a beautiful holiday and I will talk to you next week. Bye. I want you to check out AngelaMasenic.com forward slash Alive AF. You know what it's like to have a desire to cut back on your drinking, right? You start to read books, listen to podcasts, try things, but you might not be able to yet put all the pieces and suggestions together in a way that actually makes sense and works for you. You might struggle with beating yourself up after an overdrink. You might get frustrated with yourself when you take two steps forward and then another two steps back and get overwhelmed with what's right and wrong about your relationship with alcohol. 
Your friends tell you that you should be able to have just one drink and it isn't a big deal. You might be white knuckling through urges and resisting instead of peacefully processing them. And you might struggle with your identity as someone who has enjoyed having a lot of wine or alcohol in your life. It's around you all the time. It's what you do and who you are. Well, after five years of successfully coaching hundreds of women through these struggles, I have created the Alive AF membership where women like you can learn the basics and what it takes to cut back and reach your goals with alcohol, whether it is to just drink less or totally quit. And when you join, you will get the exact framework I used to change my own relationship with alcohol and still use today that has led me to be alcohol free for over five years. You're going to get access to my resources, videos, and worksheets that have been proven to change and reduce how much you drink. Every day you can ask questions, share your obstacles, and get coaching and direct support on the challenges you will face with love and no judgment. Also, you will get immediate access to workshops like uncovering your alcohol identity and changing it, how to say no to things that don't support your new identity or life or goals, aka boundaries. <laughs> a workshop called Creating Emotional Agency, and another one, How to Manage Your Mind to Succeed at Your Goals and More. Every month we have a brand new workshop. These workshops are filled with step-by-step -step prompts and instruction to help you create the exact relationship with alcohol that is best for you. My mission and vision for Alive AF is to be a hub of support and resources for women to come and learn how to do what is best for them and becoming more alive in the process. When you join, you're going to learn how to take care of yourself better, how to feel good and become more alive and go after the life that you really want. I want this membership to be affordable and an easy solution where you can get all the help you need in one simple place whenever you need it. So no need to go read another book, find a new podcast, attend a free webinar, or go down the path of piecemealing it all together. Join Alive AF and have it all there in one place for you anytime you need it. So go to AngelaMasenic.com forward slash Alive AF and enrollment is open right now. See you inside. Did my